15 minute or less lecture series anatomy chapter 15 the lymphatic system and immunity the lymphatic system has three main functions one is to drain excess interstitial fluids that's excess fluids surrounding the tissues two to transport dietary lipids from the small intestines to the uh, bloodstream and three to carry out specific immune responses specific responses against pathogens a specific pathogen via the lymphocytes uh, okay function one draining excess interstitial fluids basically there's a network of tubes running throughout the body that will collect the excess fluid and return it to the bloodstream this all starts off with these super tiny microscopic lymphatic capillaries this is the very start and they collect the excess interstitial fluid where does this excess central fluid come from well it comes from the bloodstream so the fluid from the plasma enters the tissues bringing the nutrients and oxygen and then it turns out more fluid stays in the tissues than returns to the bloodstream. So here is the lymphatic capillaries. And when the fluid enters the lymphatic capillaries, it is now called lymph. Lymphatic capillaries, super thin, one cell layer. They have anchoring filaments to connect them in place. And basically, they slight, the cells slightly overlap. And as the pressure from the fluid building up outside this, the uh, capillaries gets greater and greater, it'll eventually be great enough that the fluid will pass between these cells into the lymphatic capillaries. Uh, this is a one-way route, one way, not a circulation, but really a one-way route. The lymphatic capillaries will then fuse to form larger lymphatic vessels. There are many, many lymphatic vessels in the body. The lymphatic vessels will thin eventually fuse to form the nine lymphatic trunks, named after the general area where they are located. So we have two lumbar trunks, right and left, an intestinal trunk, uh, bronchomediastinal trunks right and left, two subclavian trunks, and two jugular trunks. Eventually, the trunks will fuse to form one of the two lymphatic ducts that then return the blood to the, uh, the lymph to the bloodstream. There's the right lymphatic duct, which receives fluids from the upper right quadrant of the body, and the thoracic duct, which, which receives blood from the remaining three-fourths of the body. Uh, so the right lymphatic duct will empty its excess fluids into the uh, special junction between the right internal jugular vein and the right subclavian vein. And the thoracic duct will return its fluids into the junction between the left internal jugular vein and the left subclavian vein. Uh, so this is a one-way flow. Blood capillaries send their plasma into the interstitial spaces. Some of the fluid remains building up, becoming the interstitial fluids that build up and enter the lymphatic capillaries, which as lymph now travels through the lymphatic vessels, through the lymphatic trunks, through the lymphatic ducts, and gets returned to the bloodstream. Uh, the fluid is under very low pressure, so the lymph fluid cannot overcome gravity, so it has within the lymph vessels little bitty valves, little pockets of tissue that help prevent the black backflow of the lymph fluid. This is very, very similar to how it works with veins. Also, the lymph vessels take advantage of the two uh, special pumps that also work for veins, the skeletal muscle pump, where the skeletal muscles contract, squeezing the lymph vessels, pushing the fluid toward the um, return to the bloodstream, and the respiratory pump, which with the lungs expanding will squeeze the lymph vessels leading to the fluid returning to the bloodstream. Again, low fluid pressure. Edema. Edema is when, uh, for some reason, the lymph circulatory system isn't working properly. This could be caused by excess filtration of fluid from the capillaries, so too much is leaving the bloodstream, and or inefficient absorption by the lymph capillaries and or damage or blockage to lymph vessels. And as you can see here, this person is having edema in their left leg. Very, very dramatic. All right, there are various organs and tissues that are also part of the lymphatic system beyond the vessels. For instance, there are the two primary lymphatic organs, the red bone marrow, which produces lymphocytes and the thymus, where the T lymphocytes mature. And so primary lymphatic organs produce immunocompetent lymphocytes. Then we have the very secondary lymphatic organs and tissues, such as the lymph nodes that lie along the lymph vessels, the spleen, the lymphatic nodules, which include the tonsils, and other various lymphatic tissues.
Red bone marrow, as we know, is where all blood cells are produced. This includes the lymphocytes. And coming out of the red bone marrow are these mature B cells, which enter the bloodstream and go to where they need to be, as well as na mature natural killer cells, which go out and kill abnormal cells of the body. And then, of course, the immature pre-T cells, which go to the thymus to mature. Uh, the B cells will then travel secondary lymph organs, such as lymph nodes, lymph nodules, etc., and keep aware and screening for a specific pathogen. Each B cell is keyed up to a specific pathogen. If it should come in contact with that pathogen, it'll then become a plasma cell or a memory B cell. The plasma cells will then produce massive antibodies against that pathogen, against antigen structures on the surface of that pathogen. And the memory B cells will remember that this infection has occurred so that in the future an additional infection by the same pathogen will have a quicker more vigorous response leading to immunity against that pathogen. T cells go pre T cells go to the lymph thymus to mature into functioning T cells. Four types of T cells helper T cells that regulate the specific immune response. They stimulate B cells to become plasma cells so they're important in that process. They also stimulate cytotoxic T cells to divide and become active. There's the regulatory T cells, which turn off the specific immune response. Cytotoxic T cells, which when activated, go out and destroy cells of the body that are affected by the pathogen. And memory T cells, which remember the infection has occurred, so that if the pathogen shows up again, there'll be a vigorous response. And this, again, is how we get immunity to diseases. Thymus. As a person ages, the thymus slowly gets replaced with uh, fatty tissue. Uh, reducing the function of the thymus and having a adverse effect to the person's specific immune response. Lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are secondary organs, little bitty structures, bean shaped, that are along the lymph vessels. So here are lymph vessels going into and out of the lymph node. Uh, the lymph nodes have a capsule of dense connective tissue surrounding the lymphatic tissue. And they are located throughout the body, but have large groups in the around the mammary glands, the armpits, the neck, and groin. Uh, they have the afferent lymphatic vessels bringing lymph into them, and efferent exiting with slightly filtered lymph. The lymph nodes will filter the lymph fluid of any cell debris and also screen for pathogens. Uh, so within it is a mesh-like structure made of reticular fibers that also have embedded in them various immune cells, macrophages, and lymphocytes, which will respond to any pathogens that might be found in the lymph, of passing to the lymph node. And lymph fluid gets filtered by multiple lymph nodes as it travels through the lymph vessel. The spleen is the largest of the lymphatic organs. It is very large on the upper left corner of the abdominal cavity. Uh, it has white pulp and red pulp based on sort of the color in our microscope. White pulp has lots of B cells, T cells, and macrophages. They're screening the blood for pathogens. The red pulp has a variety of functions, including removing aged red blood cells and platelets. It also stores extra platelets or thrombocytes and can produce blood cells back when we were a fetus. Again, the spleen is special because it is screening uh, the blood itself for pathogens. Lymphatic nodules, egg-shaped masses, lymphatic tissue. There's no capsule, so they're technically not organs. They are found uh, in the head area, in the pharynx area. These are the tonsils, one pharyngeal tonsil, two palatine tonsils, two linguineal tonsils. Also found in large groups around the appendix, way down here, and also in large groups around portions of the small intestine, where they're called the activated lymphatic Follicles. And these are all areas where it's common for pathogens to invade into the body. So these nodules are there to intercept and lead to a response to those pathogens. Uh, they possess immune cells, B cells, T cells, and macrophages, and they want to stop the pathogens, stop the infection before it becomes too serious. Uh, disorders are ruptured spleen, a common abdominal trauma disorder leading to damage to spleen. If it's significant enough, the spleen will be removed via the splenectomy. The person will survive, but their immune function will be reduced. Tonsillitis, persistent or reoccurring inflammation and infection in the tonsils. Uh, if it occurs enough times or severe enough, it may be treated with tonsillectomy. AIDS. AIDS is a caused by a virus called HIV, human immunovirus, that targets the helper T cells. So it infects helper T cells, stops them from functioning properly. 
and takes them over to produce more of the HIV, more of the virus. And then this leads to a collapse of the person's specific immune response. However, this doesn't kill the person. What kills the person are opportunistic infections, infections that take advantage of the person's reduced immune system. Uh, so HIV infection goes through three stages. The acute stage, which is basically having flu-like symptoms shortly after becoming infected. Then an asymptomatic stage, which can last for many years, two to 10 years, with no obvious symptoms, but the HIV, the virus, is slowly destroying helper T cells. And finally, AIDS itself, which is the collapse of the immune system, the specific immune system, will eventually lead to death by opportunistic infection. Currently, AIDS is treated by a drug cocktail of medications. Uh, this is working pretty effectively. Uh, there are uh, unpleasant side effects to these medications, and you have to take it for the rest of your life, but it turned a fatal disease into a lifelong chronic illness.